water. 70% of our planet is filled with it, yet it is so hard to render physically accurate water in computer graphics. Especially when we consider realistic fluid movements, water reflections, water interactions, and so on. The difficulty will amp up a notch when game engines are involved. Now, I'm not really smart enough to create a supercomputer that has the capability to render physically accurate water in real time, but I can make believable water in Godot. Now, there are a bunch of tutorials out there specifically made in Godot for the topic. My favorite ones are from Craig's vs Game Dev and Stay at Home Dev. But I will create the effect my way, so get ready to create sphere traced water. Let's go. I am using Godot 4.2 for the tutorial, and I am using this ray marching template shader, which I will link it in the description. Now, first, let's create a mesh instance 3D node. Select the box mesh, set the size to 5 meters, 0 0.3 meters, and 5 meters. Create a material. Assign our shader to our material and finally apply our material to our mesh. In the shader, I have a bunch of distance functions for various shapes. I need only SD box function, so let me just delete the rest. I only want to render a thin plane, so in the SDF function, let's call our SD box function. So D equals SD box of P. And in the half size, I will pass 2.5, 0 0.01, and 2.5. Now I have a box, basically a plane. But if I flew inside the mesh, I cannot see it. Reason is, now I'm looking at the back faces, which won't be rendered. So let's fix that. Here I will go render mode, cull front. Meaning only render back faces. And I don't want my plane to cast any shadows. So I will go shadow disabled. Alright, now I can distort the surface to mimic waves by subtracting something from our point P's Y component. Let's try some noise. For that, let's create a uniform sampler 2D noise texture. In the inspector, set the new noise texture 2D. Then uncheck this generate MIP maps. I don't want to generate MIP maps for the texture. Check this seamless option. I want to make the texture seamlessly tileable. Then I will get this new option seamless blend skirt, which determines the distance over which the seams are blended together. You can tweak this one, but I will just set it to 0.5. Then in the noise slot, use new fast noise light. You will have this nice noise texture. In the noise type, these are all different algorithms to generate noise texture. For waves, cellular looks great, but again, you can experiment here. Then this frequency is noise scale, I will use 0 0.003. In the cellular section, this distance function determines which distance type to use. Euclidean squared will be good. Okay, this will be our noise texture. Let's sample it, so here float noise1 equals texture, then the texture I want to sample, so noise texture, and I want to sample it on XZ plane, so p.xz, and then use any single channel. Now the resulting value will be between 0 and 1, which is too high, so I will multiply it with let's say 0 0.08, then subtract our noise from p.y and you will get this nice distorted surface. Right now this looks more like a terrain than the waves, so let's pan our noise. So here, just add time and multiply it with some number to control the speed. I will sample the same noise texture once more to make it go in the other direction, but you can use different noise textures as well. Float noise2 equals texture noise texture dot exit minus time multiply let's say 0 0.02 and multiply it with 0 0.06 this time then here just go noise 1 plus noise 2 now this looks so identical when both texture overlaps so let me offset the second texture a bit that's slightly better you can sample more noise textures here 
But keep in mind that the more textures you sample, the shader will become more performance intensive. Now if you see some screw ups going on like this, this means the ray marcher is overstepping. But this can be fixed by simply increasing the box height. So instead of 0.01, let's try 0.06. Now let's color our border. So first let's create a VEC3 uniform. But if I do just this, in the inspector I will get this vector 3 slot. I want color picker here. So here let's set the hint. Source color. And it will give me this nice color slot. Let's set some bluish color. Let's also add two more float uniforms for metallic and roughness. Uniform float metallic. Then I want it to only have values between 0 and 1. So go hint range 0 1 and step size will be 0 0.01 then I can set the default value 0 0.5 same thing for the roughness then in our fragment processor set albedo equals watercolor metallic equals metallic and roughness equals roughness in the inspector I can tweak this metallic and roughness and our water is starting to look super cool. Right now my water is not so transparent. In fact it is completely opaque. In real life we can see through water if it is shallow enough. I can mimic that behavior using Beer's law, also known as Beer-Lambert law, which states that the loss of light intensity when light travels through a medium is directly proportional to the travel distance. We can use that with this formula. Fun fact, Beer's law is also used in volumetric fog in Godot. But to apply Beer's law, first I need to access scene depth value from the depth buffer. Scene depth is slightly big topic, so for now just follow my lead. If you want me to make an in-depth tutorial about scene depth, let me know in the comments. Okay, so first I need to create a depth texture to read the values from the depth buffer. Uniform sampler to the depth texture. Then I need to tell Godot I want to access depth buffer. Otherwise, I will just have a texture slot in the inspector. So hint depth texture. In the fragment processor, let's sample it using screen UV. So float depth equals texture. Then the texture I want to sample is depth texture with screen UV. And then just take the R channel. By doing this, I will get the depth in normalized device coordinates and this value will be between 0 and 1. Now my project uses forward plus renderer. That means I am using Vulkan graphics API. So the actual depth range will be between 0 and 1, which I already have so it is nice. If you are using mobile or compatibility renderer, which uses OpenGL, then the actual depth range will be between minus 1 to 1. So you need to remap this depth to minus 1 to 1, which is easy enough. Just go depth multiply equals 2 and subtract 1. But I don't have to do this for the reason I stated earlier. Now I have the scene depth in normalized device space. I need to convert that to clip space. So depth equals projection matrix fourth column. And this might sound weird, but matrices in Godot are in column major order. So first index will be column and second one will be for the row. Then I just need Z component of it. Divide by depth plus projection matrix third column Z component. Then I need to add current vertex position Z component to make it relative to my mesh. And let's just visualize the depth. Oh, and I forgot to mention depth value is not linear, it increases exponentially. Let me multiply some smaller number here, so we can see what is going on. You can see that the depth value will be near 0 if other mesh is behind our border, and it goes to 1 non-linearly as the mesh moves further away from the water. Now I can use Beer-Lambert law on depth values, but first I want to control the density, so I will create a float uniform. Uniform float depth density equals 1. Then apply the Beer-Lambert law. Depth equals exponent of negative depth into depth density. 
let's just get rid of this 0.5 now I can control the density from the inspector then I want to make the water opaque in all these black parts and transparent in the white parts which is easy enough alpha equals 1 minus depth and I no longer need to visualize the depth so delete this now I can adjust the depth fade pretty cool okay now based on the depth value I can add foam to the edges where the water is touching other meshes float foam equals smooth step of 0.5 1 in depth if you don't know what smooth step does check out my smooth step video by clicking the pop-up at the top now let's visualize the foam I can control the thickness by adjusting the smooth step and multiply some number to increase the intensity I want to do that from the inspector so let's create two float uniforms uniform float foam thickness and I only want it to go from 0 to 1 so hint range equals 0 0.5 then uniform float foam intensity equals 3 then in the smooth step use foam thickness and multiply the entire thing with intensity now you can adjust the foam by tweaking the parameters and I just realized that when I increase the thickness in the inspector it is actually decreasing so in the smooth step I will go 1 minus thickness now it makes sense I can also add a texture to the foam so uniform sampler to the foam texture in the inspector I will create another noise texture while I do that why don't you hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications then let's sample the texture so foam multiply equals texture foam texture and I want to sample it on XZ plane so P dot XZ and let's pan it so plus time into let's say 0.2 and just use the R channel okay I have the texture now I don't need to visualize the foam instead I will just add it to the albedo okay the foam looks a bit weird let me just ping pong it then sign of this entire thing multiply 0.1 you can also add foam color but I will leave that to you and we have our sphere traced water right now there is no water interactions like ripples and stuff maybe I will do that in the future Oh, and I'm experimenting with. So definitely let me know your thoughts about it in the comments. Now in the video, I purposefully used the word sphere trace water because people have heard the term ray tracing and it was kind of a big deal back in the day. Sphere tracing is big brother of ray tracing. The more popular term for it is ray marching. So if you want to know more about that, check out this playlist and I will see you there.